this looks like freaking Sarajevo, man. I mean, there's a freaking boat sitting in the middle of a, of a gravel parking lot. You know, nobody's going to the lake today. Grant Park is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Atlanta. It's one of the most uh, dangerous areas in the city. 10 years ago, nobody wanted to live down here. Um, now, I can't afford a house here. We're literally right around the corner from the Masonic Hall, you know, full of crackheads and, and prostitution. So, how do you build a church in the city that reaches all of these people who so clearly live on top of each other, but outside of forced interaction because they're sharing the same street, don't interact in any way? So, we chose Grant Park because of that, because it's one of the most diverse places in the city. hold Sunday morning at Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School to come together to celebrate God, to hear the preached word, to sing his praises, and at the same time, no, that's not it. That's not the, the end goal. That's not the end game. Uh, the end game is, is living sent lives together in community, moving toward Jesus' kingdom reign. Our mission is to glorify Jesus uh, in renovating the city holistically through the gospel. That can't just happen with a Sunday morning service. If we just wanted to plan a service, we could do that. But the city would stay exactly the way that it is. For us, city groups are front lines for cultural, uh, social, missional, and spiritual engagement. Getting them to that building on Sunday mornings uh, it, it would seem insurmountable, but getting them into a home together uh, is a much easier task because they're neighbors. really focus on what it looks like to be a family. Week to week, it can be any number of things. You know, we have some kind of a plan laid out for our gathering. I mean, we like to chop it up over the sermon text so that the preach word becomes more than just uh, presentation, it becomes application in life. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes someone being confronted with the gospel brings them to a point of crisis, and we have to minister to that crisis. Sometimes it really, it, it bothers me that I'm not a part of that community. Like, I feel like an outsider in my own neighborhood. Uh -huh. You know, and that, that bothers me at times. Well, you've got something and, and it's not connected. Ralph has walked with me. Uh, it's not a matter of just information transfer. He's walked with me spiritually through the genesis of this particular community. I mean, we're talking about being on mission and looking to do something. Okay. So we said kind of gauge uh, through prayer, you know, God's direction. I'm not just saying so. Leon says he's mentoring me to take on the city group, uh, to lead it as our group multiplies, as our church continues to grow, uh, that we would not become insular and just be about ourselves, but ultimately to a point where it be passed on. There's a leader and then there's an apprentice. So in that sense, an apprentice is kind of learning about what a city group is and what it could be and how it develops and how it works like Christ, kind of walked with his disciples. Uh, his disciples were with him as he was healing and he was teaching them along the way and I kind of think it's more like that too. Taking somebody under your wings and saying, hey, follow me. We have a heart for Atlanta, but the mission of God goes beyond Atlanta. Um, it goes beyond Grant Park. So if we miss doing the multiplication piece, we ultimately miss the heart of the gospel. Um, it's for others and not just for ourselves. So my prayer is that I, you know, the Christ that I know, the one who saved me, I can introduce them to him on a consistent basis. 
when I think about Atlanta, you know, it's a lot of different terms they have for Atlanta, but for me, it's home. We, we went for months, every week, walking this neighborhood and this part of the city, praying for God to turn hearts and, and turn minds so that we can make a true and genuine impact. We were walking by Trestle Tree, which is the last Section 8 housing left in my neighborhood. Camera, what's up, man? These two ladies were sitting out on their stoop, uh, just just looking hopeless. I don't know what other way to describe it. And I really felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to go and pray for them. And, and so I walked over and I said, listen, I'm Pastor Leon's. I'm starting a church in this neighborhood. And so we asked her, how can we serve you? What can we do to serve you tangibly? And she said, can you do something for my kids? And that was the genesis of our relationship with Trestle Tree. Every time I come here, every time I come here, I'm like, well, what are we gonna do? You know, uh, what's, what's the answer to this? All we can do is continue to plant communities of people who will, will give their lives away to this uh, and, and, and pray that, that God will show us fruit for that kind of faithfulness. I think we made church planting sexy, and and I think we choose our context sometimes rather than letting God choose our context. For us to be biblically faithful to seeing true and lasting gospel change in the city, it has to happen through missional communities, through city groups. That's how churches have to be planted.